space, the final frontier. Well, maybe not today. Today, we're a little closer to home than uh, outer space, and we are talking about a different kind of space. How much space does the chicken require? As I spy on this hen, who's either thinking of going broody or maybe uh, laying an egg, I'm not sure which, we're in the chicken coop today. Of course, most people realize if you're keeping chickens, you need somewhere to keep chickens. But there are things to think about in terms of how much space your chickens actually need or uh, on a small scale, what's potentially reasonable to, to give them. So we're going to talk about that a bit and leave this hen alone. So a lot of us have chickens, or if we don't have chickens and we're trying to homestead, chickens are usually one of those first animals people think about getting because, well, chickens kind of sound easy. But there are some things to think about because we often, and we are guilty of it too in the past, don't, uh, don't, don't think that we're not, but we often underestimate the amount of space our animals require. So chickens, in a very general sense, are omnivores. In nature, you don't find chickens in big concentrations, typically, and they require a lot of different food items. So they're naturally, in a, in a non-human influenced environment, they would be limited in number by food availability and predators. But in captivity, the whole point of having a chicken coop is to eliminate predator issues. And we subsidize them. We want more chickens because we eat them. We eat their eggs. They are very valuable to us for those services. So how much space do our chickens need? Well, like everything, there's not a straightforward simple answer because it does depend. Now I'm going to give a few numbers and this is not an exhaustive digestion of how much space chickens require. There are lots of resources online that do vary, I will, and knowledge that right off the bat, where you can find specific information for specific types of chickens, whether it's bantams, uh, heavyweight, dual purpose, or, uh, or broilers. But I am going to talk about broilers and sort of the classic dual purpose heritage birds here because those are the two that a lot of us are fairly familiar with when we're homesteading because those are usually either, either one of those or a combination of both is usually the go-to for a lot of homesteaders. So broilers. Typically broilers, and you will find some different to variations on this, you don't have broilers for their full life. Uh, usually you're 12 or 13 weeks or so, and they're butchered. The minimum recommended space that uh, I've sort of found as kind of an average is 1.5 square feet per bird. I'm going to use feet because I think it'll be a little easier for uh, a lot of us because meters ends up being weird uh, decimal points and whatnot. So one and a half square feet per broiler. Now when we go to things that aren't broilers, uh, it gets a little more interesting and there's a lot of different values. So the value I'm using is sort of the minimum space across the board seems to be about four square feet. So if you were keeping any of the dual purpose heritage breeds or if you're keeping a breeding flock, and that includes your rooster, uh, he still requires space too, that's sort of the minimum. On that, if you're keeping them in complete confinement, the recommended minimum space for the, the dual purpose heritage type chicken would be 10 square feet per bird, which sounds like a lot, but we're gonna walk you through our coops and uh, it's not as unrealistic as you would think. So right now on our homestead, we have four, we have more, but we have four breeding coops that we're using at the moment. And they're basically two different uh, designs. I'll link a, a link up above that kind of shows the two of them. We have one design that is 4 by 12, 4 feet by 12 feet, which gives us a total of 48 square feet. And we have another design that's 6 by 7, which gives us a total of 42 square feet. So they're very similar, close to a 10 square foot difference there. If we use that maximum of 10 square feet per bird, it's pretty easy to see that uh, we're looking at between four and five birds per coop. That would be our carrying capacity if those birds never, ever, ever got to go outside. Of course, we do have runs off of those and uh, that allows additional space. So we're not gonna talk about sort of extra space here because we're focusing kind of on the, the coop aspect, 
But if the birds have access to extra space, of course, if they're only using it as a, as a nighttime dormitory where they're just going to sleep and then they're not going to be in the building, you could likely get away with more birds. But if for any reason you had to lock those birds up and keep them inside, you'd want to be working with that, uh, that more conservative minimum of 10 square feet as opposed to the four because uh, there are some other things to consider. I think one, one important message uh, with all of this information is we have a tendency from an economic perspective to try to get down to what's the least amount of infrastructure we need to maximize our productivity, which is a fair statement. But chickens are alive and they provide a lot of very meaningful services to us. And if you're trying to do it sustainably, I would definitely strongly urge anybody who's converting a building, building a chicken coop, getting chickens and trying to figure out where to put them in their barn, etc., to, to, to go on the higher end. The minimums are minimums for a reason. And you really don't want to drop below those minimums. But if you can look at it in the, well, let's try to provide for the more ideal, i.e. if you aren't planning to confine your chickens 100% of the time and they have access to a run or what have you, using the 10 square feet per chicken is still a good idea because if you had to lock them up, you have that option. The big thing here with space is space is part of your infrastructure. Right? Your infrastructure is usually your most expensive piece, far more expensive than the chickens, etc. So there's always this temptation and chicken producers of every size have this temptation to look at the economic numbers and go, geez, I can only keep four chickens in there? Well, if I put in an extra one, then I'm getting that many more eggs in the same space. Or what if I put an extra two in, then I'm getting that much more eggs out of the same space. And quite frankly, your chickens probably aren't going to die on you if you squeeze more chickens in, but you start to get to, into that gray area where you can run into problems. And one of the biggest problems, if you're using the full confinement, uh, calculations and your birds never come out of the coop, you can get into issues with things like air quality because let's not forget the large factory farms have ventilation systems because when you have at 1.5 square feet per broiler thousands of birds in a barn you need a ventilation system or it doesn't work. That's still true of our small-scale coops. They need to be well ventilated uh, and the more birds you put in there the more chance of issues you get. You can also run into other issues with various diseases and parasites and all these sort of things because as you crowd the birds, like any animal, when they're crowded, that tends to lead to stress. Where I'm kind of going with this is these numbers are coming from the poultry industry. There has been countless scientific studies done to figure out just how many chickens you can cram into an area and still make it be profitable, right? It's that uh, convergence of how much space do I need versus how much money can I make with this space because infrastructure is going to cost you. But when we apply this to our own small backyard flocks, usually we're not looking at the economics to that level. We really probably don't need to, but at the same time, we raise our birds and we often have birds because we're trying to give them a better life in a lot of cases, and we're not particularly happy with the current chicken distribution system. We want to know where our, bird, where our food's coming from, we want to know how they're looked after. So these numbers are still extremely important because we know well, we don't personally, but we know from the scientific literature that if you start to go higher, i.e. less square footage and more birds, you will eventually run into problems. And we can say this from our own perspective. We have, in our coops, kept more birds than the four or five. We've kept six or seven. They don't die, <laughs> but you tend to end up, if nothing else, your birds are likely to be less happy. And if they're less happy, and I know this is an intangible thing to some degree, but if they're less happy, that probably is going to make them less productive. You could get into problems, like I say, with external parasites. You could get into ventilation issues, which we don't have in our coops because they are extremely well ventilated, but it could happen. Uh, you can also get into issues such as egg eating and those type of, or feather eating, or just simply the pecking order, where somebody's going to be at the bottom of the totem pole and they can't get away from everybody else. So no matter where they go, they're going to get pecked on and we all know that that can uh, result in some pretty uh, nasty consequences for our birds. Well, as we come back into this coop with this hen, who I'm starting to now think might be broody, 
which is awesome. The real take home message here is on a small scale, when you're trying to feed yourself, infrastructure is going to be your most expensive component of your farming slash homesteading slash food raising enterprises. And when it comes to chickens, and this can be extrapolated to a great many animals, sometimes less is more. Less birds in the same in whatever space you have is likely to give them a better quality of life which is also likely going to lead you to have fewer issues with your birds and happier birds tend to be more productive birds like this bird here who wants to go broody they don't go broody if they're not uh, not generally happy so of course there is the fact that we've already talked about a little bit with the uh the productivity right the end product and we're going to go into some more discussion on that in an upcoming video where we talk about like just how many chickens or what is an ideal flock what's an ideal sustainable flock for a homestead we have some thoughts on that and this all feeds into it a little bit so of course if you only have a 4x12 coop or a 6x7 coop or whatever it is and you don't happen to have four of them you're really maxing out at around uh, four or five chickens is kind of to keep them happy of a larger breed. You'll have to evaluate on your own whether or not that will be worth it for what you need. But I do strongly caution anybody in today's day and age of uh, the temptation that's always there to try to cram a little bit more into that space in the hopes of that you'll get more productivity. Because in the end, your birds will be less happy. They potentially will be less productive and you, you run the risk of putting yourself into the danger zone of potentially having some fairly significant management uh, difficulties if you don't give them as much space as you possibly can. On that note, hopefully you found this interesting, hopefully you found it useful, and uh, maybe it's some food for thought, or thought for food as it were, or thought for chickens as it were, because uh, obviously chickens are an extremely valuable component of any homestead. I think if there was one homesteading animal that is fairly unanimous across most of North America and possibly the world, uh, the chicken would be one of them. Most of us are trying to do things on a very small scale and I think keeping that in mind, just because chickens are small doesn't necessarily mean we need exponential growth of them, i.e. avoid the, the common trap of conventional or modern homesteading chicken mass because in the end that chicken math could actually come back to uh, really bite you in the butt on your homestead or for your small flock. Keep these in mind and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, video where we discuss a little bit about uh, an ideal sort of flock size, in our opinion, for a sustainable flock uh, on a homestead in North America.